Good morning, my fellow beekeeps. How are we today? Thanks for coming by old Steve-O's bee farm and check him out. And this is true story, guys. Look at this. Okay? You like it? Over seven gallons, guys. Oh, donated over seven gallons. Um, what's today? What's today? Monday. Oh, well, what does the sign say? What does the sign say? On 421, I added a virgin and open on Monday. Today is Monday. <clears throat> yeah, we got a bunch of boxes here to open up. Let these girls fly and get on with their business here. They want to get out and see some old horny drones out there. The horny drones are out there looking. <clears throat> Let's just open this. I got a little dental tool here I use. It helps picking these wires here. You just open it up here, see? Open that hole up so they can fly. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. These girls are all queen, right? We don't need to fool with these. They're gonna need some more syrup here, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, heck yeah. 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 Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. They're sitting here, let me out, Steve-O, let me out. Let me out. Don't get these holes too big, guys. Don't get them too big. These are delicate. They're delicate, they can be robbed out easily. Usually a half inch hole is about suffice on these things. Yeah, half inch hole is about suffice. Don't get too crazy with it. Yep. Okay. All righty. Oh yeah, look at him. Release me, set me free. We got some cool stuff. I last night I had a little issue. I was I was thinking about this uh thinking about these nukes. And then I got to thinking about I've been watching a few uh videos on uh, Sam Comfort. Quite an impressive little uh, life story he's got there. I was listening to that. Quite an enterprising young lad. Anyway, I was checking him out and uh, got to thinking about what he's doing. And I like some stuff he's doing and yet I, there's other things I don't like about what he's doing, okay? What I like to do is try to utilize, get multi-purposes out of these hives. In other words, what we're doing here, you see, is utilizing deep frames to make queens, to get queens mated, to make nukes, to sell nukes, okay? And this is the normal program for nukes, selling is what you're seeing here, okay? But, back in the day, I guess he had limited resources, Sam did, and he was coming up with these little hives and he was getting recycled lumber and he's getting um, scratch and dent floor tiles for roofs. These roofs, by the way, here, guys, I make for like a dollar, five cents, I think, per lid. Yeah, it's, it, and the little bit of oops paint you put on there don't cost doodly squat, okay? 
So there's a savings. So, Steve-O's little pea brain, which my granddaughter says, Pop Pop's pea brain is spot on. So, you know, I gotta, I gotta listen to these little kids, you know? Anyway, yeah, I got to thinking about Sam's deal, what he's doing. He's using bamboo skewers. He's putting on a piece of starter wax. He puts it in a colony, let them blow it out, let them fill it with resources, pollen, you know, drawn comb. And they will do it fine on those bamboo strips, but they'll also do it really fine on a homemade top bar in the, for these hives. All you gotta do is cut them 19 inches. They'll fall right in there, but you gotta get your thickness right. Get the thickness only like half inch. You don't want to, you gotta have beef space at the top. Then we're gonna take and make some of those out of free pallet wood, okay? And we're gonna staple on, not all the way to the ends, in about this far, about an inch in from each end, I'm gonna staple on some hemp, hemp, hemp twine, cheap. Get it at a craft store, hemp twine. Fire up your crock pot, fire up your crock pot, and in a brush, and melt a little wax right along that. Yeah, melt a little wax along there and put that inside. Now once these, here's my plan. Once these blow out, all these girls are just starting to lay. All of them are getting going. Some haven't been going on mating flights. Those ones we just opened haven't gone on mating flights yet. We'll come back in three weeks on these. All I'm gonna do for these is just pump sugar water to them, okay? I'm gonna come back in like three weeks and we're gonna evaluate these. They should be back from their mating flight. If they made it, didn't get ate by a bluebird or taken out on a car windshield or a dragonfly, they should be laying. These are all quality Martin Queens, all of these. Comes from excellent stock. Okay. We'll let them start pumping eggs on all these. All right, now it won't hurt these at all we'll come in every two weeks we'll rob a frame out we'll start stealing resources we'll put another frame in there on foundation let them have it go to the next one see what they got steal that one have another deep box sitting here and start loading it up you only need three frames remember that three frames to make a new you need one with food you need one with just about solid seal brood and one about solid seal brood with some spotted eggs. Remember that, the three, that's the three components to a nuke. Put in a plane and a plane, plane foundation frame. That's all you need. Or if you've got some, some die outs that you've cleaned up and re-waxed, put those in. That's it, you mark your date, you come back in one month, you do it again, all right? This is how we're gonna pump this operation up. But what I'm going to do to utilize these, these pallet top bars I'm talking about, we're going to load our mini nukes with these. We're going to utilize standard frame, top bar frame. We're going to utilize that. We're going to let them draw out their own natural foundation on that. All right. Just put one in. You can't put more, two, more than that. And if you did, you'd have to put one over here and one over here. Don't knock them down that hard. You can knock them down. You can pull two frames out of each one, but I wouldn't pull no more than that out of established hive. Let them blow that thing out five frames to where they're really saying, hey, we need room, bud. You better put us in 10 frame. We're, we're going we're gonna to swarm on you, all right? So be vigilant. Rob out resources you can. Have boxes made up. I'm going in to go into mass production on these boxes. Here's one right here, it's a pallet wood. You can see the difference in thicknesses on the side. I don't care, the inside stays flat to the inside wall. We don't care about this deviation on outside wall, all right? These are, this is free wood. That is a date ant high right over there on the end. I hate it. Why do I hate it? Because it's only got a short, I think it's five eighths frame rest. There's hardly any room to get a beetle barn in the top of that thing. I want beetle, I don't want beetle barns. I could throw them on the floorboard, but I don't want to dig around the bottom of a hive and getting that stupid thing out of there monthly. You have to change these 
beetle barns, if you want to play this beetle barn game, you've got to change them out monthly because the bees chase in the beetles and then they entomb them in the, in the barn. Okay, there's four ports on that barn. They seal them up. So you take them out, have a spare bucket, some one of your monthly chores, throw them in there, put a fresh one in, and move on to the next hive. When you collect all your beetle barns and order extras, they're cheap, they're real cheap, they're China made, get a bunch of them, all right? Don't leave them open, by the way. Any sunlight will warp them. I, I made a mistake on that and got them warp, warpy. You might as well throw them away. You can't, they won't stay together unless you want to duct tape them with Gorilla Tape. What a pain in the ass that would be, okay? They're cheap. Throw them away when they warp, but they won't warp if you close, keep them closed. Put them in a nice plastic bag and sneak them into Miss Daisy's freezer when she's not looking. You can sneak them in there. Uh, say you're gonna cook, grill your steak like you do every day, like Steve-O does. You can sneak that in the, her freezer and set it in there. While she's not looking, of course. And then come back, eat your steak, and then come back and grab that bag and take it out here to the barn. They're gonna, that, all that propolis on those, those sealed up ports in there are gonna be hard as a rock. Cause it don't take no time for propolis to get really hard. You take your pocket knife, pop it open. I use a little thin blade screwdriver about yay long. I slip that in, pop it, and take that screwdriver on there and knock out that propolis that's in there. If, if that little piece of roach gel bait still looks pretty decent in there, it looks fairly fresh, leave it. Most of the time it'll harden up though like a like a miniature uh, just hard it's a hard little yeah you know, turd. Let's call it a turd in there. You clean that out with a I keep a box of Kleenex, I clean it out, and then I snap it back together and I throw it in the clean bucket. Always snap them back together because any heat will warp these things, okay? So yeah, that's a, that's a little tip from Steve-O on beetle barns. I, that's why I do not like these, they, they, they suck. I have a three quarter ledge on these homemade hives. They're three quarter down, three quarter out because I'm splitting the difference on an inch and a half stock on the ends here. Those are two by eights, okay? I buy those, okay? But I can get uh, six hives. I can get six hives out of one, two by eight by 10 foot. I can get six, six of these beehives out of that one board. So I buy two boards at a time. Uh, and I process those complete. I make the hives complete. Then I'll, I'll burn those up. I'll get them all the side lumber on, everything on. It's very simple on these boxes too because I start at the top and I really don't have to measure anything but I just go all the way down and at the bottom whatever's hanging out it could be that much pallet wood or it could be that much pallet wood hanging out. I have my my table saw fence set up at 10 inches so I flop the top down against the fence and push plow it right through the blade and it cuts off the bottoms perfectly 10 inch. Then we come back, of course, you've seen me build these. We staple on eighth inch cloth on the bottom. You throw on two cleats. I'm not doing this anymore. See this landing on here? Don't do it no more. I don't do it. Just drill a hole and I come up. They don't really need it. They could come right through a hole on there. There's no need for landings, okay? You don't need it. What's going on over here? That girl's looking pretty fat. She's she's out of. See see the problem, guys. Here, with not being on a rail, we have ants. There is no ants on this rail. Martin, the graph master, showed me this. Okay. Okay. I'm glad. I'm just glad that I have friends, guys. I still have a few friends left. With maximum brain cells. Okay, and Martin's one of them. Okay, guys, what I wanted to show you here is uh, something kind of different. You get these. Uh, Miss Daisy had a dinner the other night, and she didn't eat everything. So they got the to-go boxes, right? 
these little to-go boxes, clamshells, black. Guess what? Guess what high beetles are like? Black environments, okay? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put some Ultra B in here. I'm gonna mix it up in the, in the thing. I'm going to add just a little bit of honey, maybe a drop of eucalyptus oil in there. Maybe a just a drop or two of vegetable oil in there to keep the patty lubricated. I'm going to put some table sugar in there in that the beetles love the sugar. They love the honey. So we'll put the honey in just a little bit, maybe a teaspoon into this bait. We're making a trap here. We're making a trap. All right. I have another yard. I have another bee yard right over here five miles away, which is very handy. I can make nukes here if I like. If I don't want to make them up and keep them on site, and say I want to open them up right away, I can just haul that other bee yard, open the entrance, and let them fly. Put a jar of feed on them and walk away. It's kind of nice, all right? Over there at that yard, I've got a hive that I had about 40 or 50 beetles inside a beetle barn when I was over there. And a couple crawling across the top bars. You get a situation like that, you need to get on it, okay? I don't care if you're a natural beekeeper or what you call yourself, you better get on it. They will slime out a hive and it's nasty. They ruin everything. You gotta steam clean it. I mean, it's just pressure wash it. You got to freight, freeze it, scrape it out, and then you got to get out here with a brass wire wheel and wheel off, pop the foundation out of the frame, wheel it all off, it's, and then you got to re-wax it. Okay, enough of that. So here's the plan. I'm heating up over here a little wood burner. I'm going to melt in some holes in here, about five holes in the top of this thing. This has got nice little rough edges. This thing would be perfect. I'm telling you, this it looks like it'd be perfect. You're gonna come over, but the holes aren't gonna be big enough for a bee to get in. Just, just a beetle. I'm gonna put like one in the middle, and then do, 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 do five holes. But I'm gonna melt them out just the size for a beetle to get in. No, nothing more. Then we're gonna put our bait in here, and right next to the hives over there. I'm gonna set down just a makeshift stand. I'm gonna set a box. I'll take one of these empty boxes like this and I'll drop that thing in there and I'll throw a lid on it. I'll have an entrance over here or I'll just prop it up with a stick. Just stick, prop it up with a stick. Now I may have a bull ant issue. If I do, I'll put it on rails with ant traps. Because what I'm putting in there, the bull ants will like to eat it. So I may just put this, set this up on a rail system with ant moats to eliminate that problem. I'm sure I'm gonna have that problem, so I, I, I don't even need to even experiment throwing this thing on a pallet over there, because it'll be raided with bull ants. And I don't need to trap bull ants. I need to trap hive beetles, okay? So with, by baiting these up, uh, now here's another thing here. Here is uh, some fruit of some kind came in these little clamshells. Here's a clamshell. I have got quite a few of these in stock. At one time I was playing with, uh, yeah, here's two of them together, see. At one time I was playing, playing with cut comb honey, okay? Another, Another sticky mess, okay, that I don't want to deal with, okay? I've got, a, I've got probably 50 or 100 of these. I'm going to do the same thing with these, but these, we don't have a black environment here, right? But I've got some paint. I'm going to take some, put a glove on so I can hold these with my fingers like this and spray paint these black. Just maybe a flat black. Just on the outside only. Then I'm gonna melt about four or five holes in this lid and we'll bait those up and throw them in a hive. So that's that trick 
there we're going to be experimenting with. You'll be seeing the results on that. Yes, sir. You'll be seeing the results on that deal. And back to these queen. These We have a few of these. And if these work out, if these work out, I may make more of these. Because I'm not eating up any resources to speak of, okay? These are measuring, these should be about the right depth. We're looking at six and three quarter. Basically six, basically six and three quarter on this medium here, okay? Here's your standard frame. Here's your standard frame right here, all right? Standard deep frame. And the top bar measures 19 inches, like so. But here again, I was telling you before, there's no room up here. There's no room on these stupid data and hives to get a beetle barn upstairs. You, they'll go in, but it's, it's so tight, it's ridiculous. That's why these are, this is only, this is only a 5 8 cut here, as I, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's about 5 eighths is all it is. It's not enough. I don't know, but this is the standard. This is what people have been doing forever. Ever and ever and ever. I don't like it. You don't really realize what you like and what you don't like until you're in the field wrestling with this stuff, okay? And you're going after a while, well, why am I doing this? Why, why did they make it like this, you know? Oh, you have to have proper B spacing, they tell me. To a point, yes, okay? But if you took this 5 8 lip and dropped it down to 3 quarter, right? And then extended the bottom, if your frame hangs out down here, yeah, okay, fine and dandy, I'll buy that story. But this is the standard. It's been this way forever. Your 10 frame boxes, you buy them the same way. They make these ridiculous box joints here. Okay, granted, that makes a sturdy corner. Okay, I'll buy that, yeah. But if you make this end piece out of inch and a half wood, you can eliminate all this box, delicate box work that you need special, tedious, tedious work cutting these. You don't need none of that. You can butt joint this, these side pieces to the inside, the exposed edge of that two by, of that uh, two by material. And that seals up that edge, the beast propolis inside. Okay, so anyway. What I'm going to do, we're looking at here, I can quickly create this frame, guys, with pallet wood, okay? I have tons of pallet wood. We're going to be making tons more pallet wood. And a lot of this pallet wood, a lot of this pallet wood is, is about the same thickness is this top bar here. I mean, it's almost, it's almost identical. Okay, almost identical. And then it comes down, this lip they create to go on the ledge, that's seven, seven sixteenths. This is basically five inches, Five eighths thick, okay, by one inch. We can create these top bars, guys, with this pallet wood. 
that I have tons of. Now, granted, there's some thinner than others, but that's no big hairy deal either. That's no big hairy deal either. Some is thinner, but the majority of it is as thick as this. How sweet is that? So, what we'll do, quickly set up my chop saw, which is over there on this table, setting out to blow the dust out of here. We'll chop these 19 inches long. We'll set up our table saw like so and we'll burn out we'll set our table saw our chop saw up and start chopping these pallet wood then we'll throw the the uh, of course you, you don't want any big knots in there work around the knots that's a piece of cake set your fence up for one inch you've already got your thickness so you're going to be whacking out one inch strips night they'll be 19 inches long now now you can get you can get fancy here or you don't have to chop them down either way i'm going to find out because my boxes are as you remember 30 three quarter the rails are three quarter well you won't have enough space too much space here you're only gonna have, have like a sixteenth. That's not enough. No big deal. I can create this notch in here. Just cut this down till it drops down in the space. So then now you've got B space here. Now you're gonna take and lay this flat on the table. You're gonna grab that T50. You're gonna lay a piece of hemp string here and staple it about an inch from the ends, okay? and pull it tight and staple it here a hemp string going right down the center of this pallet thing you're going to make now you can go in to existing hives you can use your deep deep boxes to make up your frames to make up a nuke you need you need to get those three frames we talked about earlier the two broods the one food drop a plane on the outside with this with these boards you're making we need resources we're going to utilize our deep our deep boxes that we have our virgins in now and they're going to start pumping eggs like crazy we'll go in and just drop one of these in because i want i want resources to fill these up these el cheapo boxes yes this is going to be making queens very cheaply with poor man money, okay? This is poor man stuff here we're talking here. But it's going to be efficient too because you're going to come in and harvest that frame in a week or so out of that colony you dropped it in. Granted, it's just going to be a bar. You can put it right in the middle. You want to put it between solid pieces a foundation though the bees are working on and they will bring that straight down now don't wait too long because they will make it the depth of this bar let them come down to about here with it and pull it out harvest it and move it right over bees and all make sure your queen ain't on make sure that she's got eggs laid in there it'd be great if she had some seal brood in there yeah and you can start harvesting these. So if you did this, if you think about it, you're doing this to 20, 20 some nukes. You're constantly harvesting resources, constantly. You gotta feed them. They're only gonna get do what they can if they, if they got nectar coming in. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start harvesting resources. We're going to, uh, I may even make more of these. I may even make more. But this way we can utilize a top bar, right? Be like a, those stupid African top bar hives. You've seen those things. I, I think that's a total waste of freaking time, but I understand what they're doing. They're getting cargo stuff, wood coming off cargo ships, and they make these things, you know, whatever they can. But for for to keep standard 
to keep in the standard industry what they've got existing, okay, we have to do that, but utilize these frames. Now, Sam Comfort, he's turning out, he claims 3,000 queens annually. He works north so many months and in Florida so many months. So he can keep breeding bees year round, basically, when he hits Florida. Especially if you go to south end of Florida, I think you got drones flying everywhere. In my area right here, I don't think but there's about a month shut down where I don't have drones flying here. I might, I've never tried it, but you might be able to raise bees year, year round, making queens year round here. I know Chris, Chris Warner operation up there from what I've seen, uh, they're almost, uh, they're about doing their thing three, 365 days and he's north of me here. So, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, somewhere in there, you gotta have a vacation, right? But anyway, so I think this is gonna work out pretty slick. I just thought I'd pass on my idea, you know, getting ideas from other beekeepers, um, rethinking the situation. Uh, yeah. So you'll be able to pull out this. It's, it's, you gotta be mindful what you're doing. Have a little tagging system, whatever you need, something to uh, indicate that you've got starters in there because they will bring this all the way down. Then you got a big old floppy piece of comb in there and that ain't good. But by, you, by using this and using a shorter box, uh, yeah, you can, you can do all right with this. I, I would think you could get a two, make these out of with two by sixes, whatever that depth is, two by sixes. And then for here, I've got a bunch of these lids here. I got a bunch of these lids here with feeder holes in them that I'm, that I'm phasing out. And instead of just having them laying around rotting, there's not that many years left on these. I'm gonna put a staple piece of screen on here Actually, I ought to do it on this side. Staple on this side, because it's got a coat of paint on it. And this is kind of open, but the bees have put some propolising on it. They've shellacked it quite a bit. Anyway, for this, you don't need a lot of... On my bigger hives, I've got the entire bottom screen with 8th inch. But for these little minis, we're just going to put... These little baby factors, just going to put one piece here... I am going to screw this to that to make it permanent. I don't want to pick that box up and have this fall off, bees everywhere. This will be screwed to this. We're going to bore a hole in the end for a half inch hole in the end for entry uh, or on the side. And this way, what we can do, guys, we can load these up, let them make their own. Once I get set up to get my builders going my queen cell builders going we'll be installing virgins in these boxes but until then hey load them load them up and let the bees be making bugs for you because we're we are right into the the heat of the breeding season right now it starts in february and goes all the way to for me It'll go all the way to probably September 15th, and I, then I start winding down. Uh, yeah. Um, I got a Brazilian pepper flow coming in about September 15th. Look at this girl come in here to check me out. She said, where's Steve-O? Where is he? What's he doing now? They come in. They're always checking me, guys. These bees are always checking me. What's he up to now? He's got a different game plan. I know he does. So anyway, quickie video for today. Well, I don't know how quick this is. I've been BSing for a long time. But anyway, this is what I'm doing to utilize this junk equipment. And um, let's put it to work. I mean, no need sitting around here looking at this stuff. And we can start building our top bars to go in here. Uh, yeah, we'll make them one inch. They're one inch, you noticed here, these are one inch here, one inch, but you have these ears on the side. I don't care about that. I'm going to make these one inch, and I will eyeball that spacing between. I've been a beekeeper long enough to know what that distance is. 
see you've got that little piece of meat and the next frame will butt up against this bar see so that creates that little b space in there i can eyeball that i can take five of these and put in there and quickly adjust these and everything is hunky dory same as when i put these top a homemade inside an existing five frame box i just center it up with my hive tool real quick and i walk away i'll come back i'll come back in probably a week and peek in there and i'm a, and if i like what i see i'll harvest it i'll put in another one of them make them go to work if i set up if i set up 15 20 boxes like this and i'm harvesting all this resources out of there think about how many nukes i can refill because i only need three frames to make one of these up although knowing that they're five frames see and we'll just fill this box up you're going to have to have some comb, though, that's dropped down equally in there. You just can't fill it up with these homemade top bars because they will make a wobbled mess out of that whole thing. You've got to have control between existing frames to put in this thing. I did it for a long time with deep frames, but it's not, it's not a real sellable thing. I mean... They'll, you know, you, you get an inexperienced beekeeper, he picks it up, tilts the frame, the entire wax falls out in his lap, and it's just, it's not a fun day, okay? So, you need the foundation, but for these homemade queen-making operation, uh, thinking along the lines of Mr. Sam Comfort, uh, I like the way that boy thinks, and he's turning out a very quality product. He claims he's burning out, turning out 3,000 queens per year between New York and Florida, and he's selling them for $48 a piece. Now, I don't know who's buying $48 queens, but God bless them. If they got the money, they go for it. But the thing you got to think of, too, is, you know, the time, cost, Joe's high-end sugar, Joe's high-end fuel costs getting bees from point A to point B. Uh, you know, you got to start. So everything's going up with the nonsense on the left. A lot of people say, don't throw politics. No, I'm throwing in common sense and survival techniques is what I'm throwing in on this operation. Okay. We don't need some flipping idiots in Washington that have never worked a day in their life. All they sit in, do is sit in there running their freaking mouth. They don't know the real world that we're living in today. It's a flipping joke. Uh, so, yeah. I, it, let's not talk about that anymore. My pressure may go up. But you see what I'm doing here? This is something you can do cheaply if you've got just a few hives uh, or you've got hundreds of hives. You can start burning queens with this deal I'm talking about. Hey, and at the end of the season... Uh, you could leave some bugs in here and let us see if they'll overwinter just for giggles. And if they don't, whatever, you can cut out all this wax. You can cut out all this wax and melt it down, guys. And put it back into your operation. And then all you got to do is cut a, take a fish fillet knife, run right along that, that uh, hemp, hemp string that I've told you about I'm going to put in here. I'm going to put a hemp string right in here and staple one staple there, pull it tight, put a staple there. I've done, I've done hundreds of these and they work really cool. And you just take a paintbrush, put it in your crock pot, let it heat, it, the wax heat up and just run a little bit of wax right along top of that hemp string. Them bees will jump on that in a heartbeat and start bringing down the prettiest comb you've ever seen. They will fill up this entire frame with wax. But I'm just going to put in, I'm not going to put in end bars. I'm not going to put in end bars. I don't need them. Won't need them. Just w when you're picking up and look at these things, you've got to pick it up. You can't turn it. you got to pick it up, look at it, and then turn the frame around and look at it. Now, you can take it and carefully, once you're looking at it, uh, just, just carefully lay it down on top, say, of the beehive. You see your queen here you want to harvest. You get one of your pipes. You've seen the pipe, harvest pipes. You set that pipe right over, let her crawl in. A few attendants crawl in with her. More the merrier. 
pull her up. When she's trying to start crawling down the pipe, you stick your foam in there. Now you've got her trapped. Now you can put this back in, this frame back in there. If she's got eggs and stuff in there and re good resources and you're feeding them, they're going to make you another queen. So in 30 days, you just keep rotating these babies. Take those trapped queens you've made, go to your existing colonies and start robbing out resources. Load them on your truck, haul them to another location, or lock them in lockdown for three days. Leave them, leave them queenless. When you make them up, make them queenless for 24 hours. You can take the, the, the harvest queens you don't have in stock now, that you've har and they're mated queens. Go in the next day and, and use my vanilla water, uh, uh, sugar water, vanilla with extract in it, and do a direct release spritz them bees open that friggin tube up let her walk in spritz her let her crawl down there i have i have installed hundreds of queens that way and haven't had an issue with them getting bald everybody said you could you could take put them in jay-z bz plastic cages stuff a couple marshmallows in the end of that tube and intro them that way if you like if you're puckered up about uh, direct release with spray do it that way but you'll have plenty of queens to play with once you get this operation up and running but you need hives i tell everybody when you get into bees they say well i'll buy one hive no not so much you want to buy probably have at least five and uh that way you can double it in the spring and with that many you can always sell your surplus you know that's it for today. So I'll show you a quickie here. I gotta get I gotta stop BSing and get to work, okay? You guys are holding me up. I gotta make some money here. Miss Daisy wants to pay the bills. See you later. Bye bye.